So the trailer for Megamind 2 came out and it wasn't great. I know it's hard to make a sequel to a beloved childhood movie, especially one as iconic as Megamind, but this was just plain bad. So let's just shove that aside for now and focus on what you all came here for, putting Megamind in D&D. Now, warning, this won't necessarily follow the rules as written, but meh, this is how you get Megamind, or as close as I possibly could with the effort I was willing to put in. Now, I only have this sheet, so we're just going to go through it. If you disagree with anything, leave a comment letting me know what would have been better. While you're at it, click that subscribe button. It would help me lots. Now, let's begin with where all good character sheets start. The name, Megamind. Along with that, we have the race, which I put as Alien. Because, well, he's an alien. You watched the movie. You know he's from outer space. I just used normal human traits for the modifier. As for the class, I was thinking, what would best emulate Megamind's ability to create his gadgets? Like his famous dehydration gun and invisible car. He's essentially an inventor and engineer. So of course, D&D's own engineer, the Artificer, seemed like a perfect fit. And why level 7 you ask? Why Battlesmith subclass you ask? Meh, why not? Could be arbitrary, could be not. Maybe you'll find out, so stay tuned for that. Now, for characteristics. I think we can agree this makes sense. You can of course put anything you want, and if you can think up something better, let me know in the comments down below. Now, moving on to ability scores. In case you're curious, I used a point by system for this. Anyway, I think we can all agree Megamind isn't the strongest, so a strength score of 9 makes sense. Now, dexterity being a 14. I have two reasons for that. One, to make all his fancy toys and gadgets, he'd need some dexterous and nimble hands. And two, in the movie, I'd say he's performed some decently acrobatic feats, things I know I'd never be able to do without breaking something. Speaking of breaking stuff, Constitution. Obviously, if he got properly punched by Titan even once, the movie would have been a lot shorter. But throughout it, he has been tossed around a bit, so I'd say a decent constitution of 12 works. Now, intelligence at a whopping 17. I think we can all agree this makes sense. His entire gimmick is that he's super smart, so I tried to raise intelligence as high as I possibly could. Now, wisdom at a mere 9. Hal getting his powers was just a misfire, sure, but letting a random person he didn't know anything about keep the powers of one of the most powerful people in the world didn't seem like the wisest choice. This is no mistake, it's destiny. Though, if you argue that it should be higher, I might agree with you. Remember the scene with Titan, Megamind, and the Invisible Car? One of my favorite scenes in any media ever. You're so <laughs> pathetic. No matter what side you're on, you're always the loser. There's a benefit to losing. You get to learn from your mistakes. So yeah, he keeps losing, but he learns from them. Something not to be underestimated. His wisdom could be higher, but for now, I'll just keep it at a 9. Now, Charisma at 13. I actually want to go a bit higher with this, purely because he's got so much pizzazz and flair. I mean, the movie wouldn't nearly be as much fun if he wasn't such a showman. Sadly, the limits of the point by system force me to keep it at a 13. If you want it higher, go for it. I won't stop you. Now, for the skills. I decided to make him proficient in acrobatics, arcana, deception, and performance. Acrobatics, cause like I said before, he's done some decent acrobatic feats. Arcana, well, you can view arcana as being good at science or magic and we know he's very good at science. Deception, cause he spends all that time pretending to be Bernard. Now, he's obviously not very good at pretending to be Bernard, but in D&D, a high deception doesn't mean you're good at lying. It just means you've gotten away with it somehow. And performance, well, need I say more? You know he's got a lot of pizzazz. Now, let's jump on over to features and traits. Now, the right tool for the right job, tool expertise, and flash of genius were all Artificer traits to help with building gadgets and gizmos. Level 7 Artificers gained them by default, so I just gave it to him. Now, Homunculus Servant. They are essentially small flying constructs and Megamind has his little brain bots, so it seemed like a good substitute. Now, the Steel Defender. 
The reason I picked the Battlesmith subclass is because I think we can all agree his loyal and faithful and lovable minion is his Steel Defender. And you need to be a Battlesmith to get a Steel Defender. I also considered the Armorer subclass because of the giant robot suit he used to fight Titan, but Battlesmith seemed more fitting. Now, health is the default for a level 7 Artificer. As for AC, Megamind doesn't wear armor, so I kept it at the default. Now, finally, what I'm sure all of you are most excited for. Attacks and spells. Now, as you can see, I put Mending because of course he has to fix his broken gizmos, Levitate because he sometimes uses his little brain bots to float and fly, Invisibility of course for his famous invisible car that he always somehow misplaces, Disguise Self because he disguised himself as Bernard for a lot of the movie, as well as that Hal space dad thing, that entire plotline, False Life, because he spent a lot of it as Bernard living a false life. I am including it for the pun rather than for any mechanical reason. Finally, what you've been waiting for, his famous dehydration gun. Now, what it does is essentially dehydrate them into these little cubes. Now, it doesn't kill them, just add water and they're as good as new. The closest thing I could find to transforming people into tiny cubes is true polymorph. Really high level and powerful, but I think we can all agree that it's fitting. And there you have it, Megamind in D&D. Anyway, that's all I have. What did you think? Loved it? Hated it? Anything I could have changed or added? Well, comment down below, and while you're at it, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. Also, in the description down below is a link to something I'm writing. A lore book filled with short 500 to 1000 word snippets of my fantasy world. Check it out if you can, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, see you all next time. Bye!